Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now when it comes to question number five of the English language paper two exam, this question can be a little bit daunting. The main reason is because firstly, half of the overall paper's marks are reliant on this question. Therefore, this question can make or break your mark. That's the first reason why students can find it a little bit challenging. Also, this question, unlike question number five in paper one, well, at least you get an option of either creative or descriptive writing, you literally have to work with what you're given. You're given a statement, it's usually an issue, a debate, and you're asked to what extent do you agree, you decide if you're gonna agree, disagree, or stand somewhere in the middle. For this question, you need to make sure on the spot you're able to develop your argument, but equally you need to show that as part of your persuasive writing, you can consider why people might disagree with you. Now the best way to pre uh, prepare for this question is firstly, make sure you are aware of the different forms you might be asked to write about, okay? You could either be asked to write an article, a letter or a speech, so make sure you are very intricately familiar with the form and the layout of that. And of course, I'm gonna walk you guys through all the different steps for each of the different forms of writing. That's the first thing. However, the second way to also prepare for this question and almost anticipate what might come up is think about just topical issues, okay? So question number five for paper two tends to ask you to talk about and to consider stuff that we tend to hear about anyway on radio, in news, some of these topical issues sometimes are even floating around on TikTok, right? Things like, you know, social media good for us? Is education worth the paper that it's printed on? Etc. Etc. So as long as you have just a general awareness of some of these really popular topical issues, you should be absolutely fine when answering this question. So what I'm going to do is, of course, after walking you through the different forms for question number five, I will make some suggestions when it comes to topics to consider, but I'll also make some bold predictions as to what I think will be coming up in the question and specifically in question number five in the upcoming exam, okay? So as I mentioned, when, when it comes to question number five, you could either be asked to look at and to produce an article or a letter or a speech. To be honest, this shouldn't throw you off. If you see, oh, write a magazine article, write a broadsheet article, whatever. As long as it says article, you follow this seven step framework. If you're asked to write an article or a letter to an MP, to doctor, to your headmaster, headmistress, whatever, you follow this eight step. And of course, if you're asked to write a speech, either for your school leavers day or whatever, then you follow this six steps, okay? So I'm gonna begin by showing you guys literally how to write the perfect article. There are seven steps in my opinion that constitutes the best and most perfect article. An article, remember when even, for example, if you see any newspaper articles, if you go out and pick up a newspaper, you'll tend to find that it starts off with a headline. The headline is right at the top, it hints what you, the article is gonna be about and it tends to be short, okay? five words max. And the best way to write a really, really good headline is look at the keywords within the statement that you're given, turn it into a rhetorical question. That's step number one for your article. Then step number two for your article is start off with your opening paragraph. Now for this question, as I mentioned, you are gonna be asked to produce an argument or a debate on an issue. Therefore, in your opening paragraph, this is where you set out your line of argument. You say, okay, I've considered the article and I've considered this statement and this is where I stand. I agree, I disagree, or I agree to an extent, I disagree to an extent. This is where you include it in your opening paragraph. You make it really, really clear what perspective you're going to argue for. Then your second subheading, a little bit like the headline, break up the text so that you can make it easy for your reader's eyes to glide over this article. You follow with a subheading, okay? Your first subheading, again, it's really short, it's really brief, it's just hinting what the next uh, line of arguments you're gonna develop are. Then have at least two to three paragraphs where you outline your main points. Point number one, why I think I'm right. Point number two, point number three. Add some anecdotes, add some statistics, use direct address, add rhetorical questions and so on to make your article engaging. Then after, follow with another subheading, break it up. This subheading should hint at the counter arguments because you need to balance your discussion. Then of course, step number six is where you include your counter arguments. This is where you're showing why people will disagree with your perspective. Again, remember, this is a debate, okay? A debate is not just a one-sided thing you need to show. Okay, these are my perspectives, but equally, this is why people disagree with me. You need to inc include that in your counter argument before you finish off with your closing paragraph, and please never end your article with in conclusion, it's not an essay, it's supposed to be an entertaining article. That's how to frame the perfect article, however, you might be asked to write a letter. It could be a letter to your headmaster, your headmistress, your local MP, whoever. 
How can you write a perfect letter? There are literally eight steps to the perfect letter. You start off thinking about who you're writing this letter to and including their address, okay? So say you've got to write a letter to your MP or uh, your Minister for Transport, whatever, right? Make up a name because maybe you might not know who your minister is. And then you just write, for instance, MP John Smith, then the made up address, 1 Westminster Way, London, SW1, 1KB, for example. Okay, so you start off with the address to show that you are addressing this letter to somebody else. Then follow on with the date. Do not do some weird, crazy, futuristic date in the future. Okay, no 2050, 3020, just add the date that you're writing this letter. Then, dear whoever, keep it formal, dear MP John Smith, dear Mrs. Bob and Jow, for instance. And then in your opening paragraph, much like your article, you then state the perspective that you're gonna take when it comes to this debate. Follow one of your main points, reasons one, two, and three, why you believe you're correct. Adding in your anecdotes, made up statistics, rhetorical questions, all of that. Then your counter arguments, you need to still balance your discussion, why people would disagree with you before you finish off with your closing paragraph. And then you end your letter by signing off, either your sincerely or me, I personally like, kind regards because it's really easy to spell kind regards your name and surname kind regards Bob and Jow. that's a letter however you might also be expected to produce a speech okay so maybe you might be asked to write a speech hence you should follow this six step framework for the perfect speech start off any speech that you put by addressing your audience directly okay so when it comes to, for instance, let's say you've got to produce a speech on um, the benefits of travel, um, or even for instance, um, you're writing a speech on the importance of qualifications uh, to other students, okay? So of course you begin by addressing your audience. Fellow students, I'm here to talk about blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, to be honest, you don't start with, I'm here to talk about fellow students. There are many people who think qualifications are worthless. There are many people who think education in school is worthless, yet I disagree. This is what I think, okay? so. You start off by addressing your audience firstly, then as I've stated in your opening paragraph, you then say, here's my perspective. If I'm writing about education, I think education is really good. Even if there's many people who disagree with me, um, I still think education is perfect and we should all get GCSEs. That's in your opening paragraph, for example, if you're writing about education. Then follow on with your main points, reason one, two, three, why you agree, adding in your made up statistics, counter arguments and so on. Then count, uh, and of course, then you add your counter arguments, okay, why people will disagree with you. Before you finish off by stating, you know, I still think I'm right. This is why I think, you know, my perspective is correct. And then you finish off, final step. This is the step that students always forget with the speech. Finish by thanking your audience. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope you've learned something new, okay? So when it comes to question five, you could either be asked to produce an article, letter or speech. It's actually straightforward to be clear on these frameworks and you shouldn't be too stressed out about it, okay? Just remember to make sure you demonstrate an awareness of form. Now, let's quickly talk about the main things that examiners are looking for, okay? This is your AO5 and your AO6. Now, when it comes to AO5, what this simply means is when you're arguing, are you able to clarify your arguments? And also, are you able to show, you know, this is, you know, um, are you able to develop your arguments and say, this is why I believe in my perspective, but also this is why people would be wrong. And can you show an awareness of form, which is this stuff, register, so speak formally or write formally. And of course, also when you're writing, make sure you're using literary devices such as uh, similes, rhetorical questions, short and long sentences, make it entertaining, metaphors, similes, but also make sure you're adding your persuasive t devices and persuasive techniques. Persuasive devices are things like direct address, things like rhetorical question, things like, you know, when you're talking and using pronouns that make your audience or readers feel included, pronouns like we, for instance, okay? So make sure you're including that. And of course, also use ambitious language so that you can hit your AO6, which is your spag points. Now, when it comes to what I think will be coming up, so this is my predictions for the upcoming exam, I actually reviewed all the past papers and I had a look at, you know, especially question number five. And I noticed since 2019, literally all the question fives have been articles. You've been asked for one reason or another to write an article on this and an article on that, okay? So whilst you can maybe anticipate an article coming up, I personally think there's a small chance of that coming up because the last time we had either of these, a letter was asked back in 2018 and the last time we had a speech asked was in 2017. So firstly, my prediction, I think, 
The question you're going to be asked, look at, of course, you've got the statement. I believe that there's a very strong chance of a speech coming up because a speech hasn't come up ever since 2017. Uh, maybe a secondary uh, form that you might be asked to look at is possibly a letter. However, the reason why I'm not too keen on the letter is because the letter was part of the recent paper for this year, okay? So that's my prediction. I think you guys are gonna be asked to produce a speech. There haven't been any speech questions since 2017, but of course, don't only prepare speeches, make sure you have an awareness of all forms. Now, finally, when it comes to topical issues, okay, the best way to prepare for question number five is to have an awareness of different topics that could come up, different topical issues that could come up. And this is my suggestion in terms of the topics that could possibly come up in the exams, okay? Now, of course, last year travel did come up and it's still a very popular topic, okay? It could even be travel, whether it's really good, whether it can be polluting for the environment. Travel is something that's a really topical issue, okay? Another topic is to do with young people's attitudes, okay? Are young people too entitled? Are young people snowflakes? I think that would be a really, really interesting topic. And make sure you consider this and think about, okay, what would I talk about if I were talking about young people's attitudes? What could I argue against as well, okay? Education is always, it always comes up in one form or another. Homework, school uniform, that's something that you can consider coming up as part of question number five for the exams. Equally, the environment, climate change, that's a really, really interesting topic. And again, it's super, super topical, could possibly come up in the exams. Finally, animals, animal welfare, animal cruelty, is it really wrong to have zoos? Is it wrong to keep pets and so on? celebrities versus normal people and rich versus poor okay so for example do celebrities um, deserve the praise and worship that they get do rich people do they need to, for example to be taxed more that could be an issue and the final which i think could possibly come up is the idea of social media and technology is it good is it bad for us again guys remember when you're thinking about the topical issues that could come up for this question Include this as part of your analysis and part of you considering, okay, when it comes to question number five, if this issue comes up, this is where I would stand. This is what I would argue against, okay? So I hope that helped. And guys, if you want me to walk through a model response, I'll be more than happy to do so. And I'll be more than happy to film a follow-up with the model response for one of the past paper questions. Thank you so much, guys, for listening.